Hi, I'm Andrew Clark, the Logistics Optimizer, and today we are talking storage capacity increases in the warehouse by narrowing your aisles between your pallet racks. So I drew up a diagram to show you how this works, and I'll stick the link in the description so you can go in and see this design online and do exactly what I'm showing you here now. So this is a plan view of a warehouse showing different aisle widths from between four and a half meters between racks down to 1.3 meters between racks different times of configurations. You can obviously see just from this plan that there are much more racks in this top row than there are in this bottom row. So you can navigate this design. So I've, I've described here in detail, so you can see here, 23 racks, five levels, 230 pallets, 1.35 meters high, 421 cubic meters, 92% increase in storage capacity versus the four and a half meter aisle down here. So that's my zero point. So you see the uh, decreasing aisle widths. And this last one here is a special case because this is long span shelving. You cannot store pallets in this, but you can use the full width to store cases. So if that suits your particular stock profile, this is actually a really good way to go. So what that looks like if you, and where's my graph? There it is. If you graph this, then what you see is from a four and a half metre aisle as my baseline here, up to that 1.3 metre super high density storage, that is 144% increase in storage capacity when looked at from cubic metres perspective. So um, even if you just go from four and a half metre aisle, so that's the rack to rack distance there to a four metre aisle, that's a 25% increase in effective storage capacity in my theoretical 50 meter wide warehouse. Obviously the, the detail is just gonna be um, uh, very different depending upon the particular warehouse. But these are the kind of increases you can get. So I have often increased storage capacity by 50%. Sometimes I've actually doubled it. Um, so it can make a huge difference to your storage capacity if you narrow the aisles in your warehouse. But it needs to be appropriate to what you are doing. So I'll just show you how to navigate this drawing, which might be uh, helpful. So you can click here, this to zoom extents, and it will take you to the maximum extent of the warehouse. If you click here, you'll get into the orbit tool and you'll actually see that this is a, a 3D design. But when you first do that, it will look a little weird because it's a parallel projection. So you need to click on this view menu clapperboard up there, click on the perspective box up there, and then you'll see a, a proper isometric um, view, which will look a bit more normal. And I have standard view. So you can click on the plan view, which is the first one you see, then a plan view detail on the aisle widths. Then we can look at a top view in 3D of the aisle widths. And then we can look down the end and we kind of get a sense of what the aisle widths are like if you're sitting in the warehouse looking at it. Then some detail here. Now, just want to draw your attention here. This particularly applies in Australia where the rack to rack distance, 3.3 meters there, and the effective aisle width is 300 millimeters less because Australian pallets overhang the, uh, the beams by about 150 millimeters. So the effective aisle width is always 300 millimeters less in pallet racking than the distance between the racks. And lastly, <coughs> in the high density long span, this works in only a 1.3 meter aisle, floor to ceiling long span. You can drive a uh, uh, an order picker into these aisles for high density storage and case picking only. So that has very special use cases, but it is incredibly dense storage and, uh, and may be part of your warehouse design if it's relevant. Now, you need different types of equipment for these different aisle widths. So here, the four and a half meter aisles and four meter aisles, they'll work fine with most counterbalance forklifts. But once you get down to these three meter aisles, then you really need to be using a different type of uh, equipment. Although there are some quite small counterbalance forklifts which will work in this aisle. But counterbalance, they're, they're really not used for general warehouse activity in most modern warehouses. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't people still doing it. Obviously there are, but these are in any kind of uh, uh, modern warehouse, you wanna have a three meter aisle or around about three meter aisle or less. And this is what you would call very narrow aisle here. And this is extremely narrow aisle <laughs> um, uh, uh, and is a special use case. So let's have a look at the equipment. 
All right. So the first thing that I talk about in my so I've got I'll put a link here to the uh, um, the LinkedIn newsletter. If you want to follow me on LinkedIn, you can follow my uh, uh, my newsletter where I put out content like more content like this. Um, so uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn as well. So this is an articulating forklift. This is the Isle Master. There's two major brands in Australia, the Isle Master and the Bendy forklift. Look, there are probably others that I don't know about, but they're the ones that I do. Um, they're both, you know, really nicely made units. To me, they look a bit like a tractor, but they're like a counterbalance forklift. So you sit down, you've got to climb up into them and sit down and they're really aimed at pallet movements. But the entire front mast is the steering and it moves from side to side so that they will work in very narrow aisles. So these will work in aisles down to about 1.9 meters pallet to pallet. The, uh, now, because they're a counterbalance forklift that you sit on, they're not great for order picking. And Isle Master recently came out with this low floored uh, version of the Isle Master, which is more suited for order picking because it's easy to step on and off, which is what you were doing if you're doing order picking with a forklift. And uh, oh, there it is there. Uh, and this is the Bendy. So Bendy really give you a nice kind of sense of how the, uh, one of the big pluses with the articulating forklift is that it really is a do it all truck you can use it in the yard on uneven services because they've got chunky tires like a like a counterbalanced uh, forklift so they're great for truck loading and unloading and they're also uh, reach up high because they have a fixed mast that doesn't tilt and they work in super narrow aisles so just like the turret trucks which we're going to show you next these things will work in uh, really narrow aisles so one forklift could do everything that you need in your warehouse. If you have a small operation and you only have one forklift and you want to maximize your storage density, then this is your best option. The next thing we'll talk about is the uh, the turret trucks. So turret trucks tend to be big chunky beasts designed for uh, narrow aisles. They'll, they'll work in less than two meters pallet to pallet, 1.7, 1.8, I think at about a, a minimum, varies depending upon the the type of forklift and the height of the racks and size of the chassis, all of those things. But the great things about these is you can sit, you can drive, they have an auxiliary, um, so they're very comfortable and easy to use for moving pallets around. They are designed to mainly stay within the very narrow, narrow aisle racking. They're not for general purpose. You're obviously not going to load a truck with one of these things. They have an auxiliary mast here and these pallets flip, flip around from side to side. So this whole thing you know, you can see the gears here, it moves across over here and the pallets flip around from side to side so you can store and retrieve pallets on either side of these narrow aisles. Now, in addition to that, because of this auxiliary lift, they are also perfect for case picking. So you've got a frame here in front of you, you can lean over that and you can lift the pallet up to the right height and you can build, uh, a, you know, a, a pallet of stock that you pick from within the, your high bay racking. So a really, really great device. Uh, I used to drive these when um, I was at Baxter Healthcare years ago, and I, I love them. I think they're a fantastic unit. Now, there are, of course, lots of different brands and different types of um, uh, of these turret trucks. And just here over on the Toyota site, we can see three key different types. So this first one here looks like it's built on a reach truck chassis. So it's obviously a relatively small unit, but it still has that turret and the sideways facing tines that can flip from side to side. But you're obviously only going to move pallets with this thing. Now, because that is quite small, you could probably get away with doing some other kind of, you know, uh, general forklift duties uh, with this versus these big beasts where you're really, you need to keep it within those, uh, within those narrow old racks. So, and there are two different types. So you see this one here has got a guard and it's got the controls in front of the driver. So probably not much use for case picking because those things are going to be in the way. So even though you've got the auxiliary lift, it's not really ideal. I think that's probably the BT unit because Toyota bought uh, BT. And then this is the, I'm pretty sure that is the Raymond version um, that is also Toyota brand now. Uh, again, auxiliary lift, nothing in front of the driver. So you're obviously going to have to be harnessed when you're driving these things, but you've got complete free access to uh, to building pallets and doing case picking. So that's a that's a pretty neat, uh, uh, neat unit, that one. So... Look, I imagine if you wanted that in a crown, I can probably unbolt that thing and, you know, have at it. So that is the reach, uh, that is the turret truck. 
Um, so those, so both the turret trucks and the uh, the articulating forklifts that I spoke about, these will both work in narrow aisles, less than two meters, about 1.9, maybe even 1.8 meter uh, wide aisles for the turret trucks. So super high density storage. And of course, well, they both go very high. The turret trucks go really high, like 16 or 17 meters high, something like that. Um, you know, nearly crane levels of height. Not many warehouses are that high. Uh, I think the max on the Isle Master is about 12 meters from memory um, for the heaviest duty units, but you probably also might need to be in a slightly uh, wider aisle with their heavier duty units. So if you are just moving from counterbalance to the reach truck, then you will be in this kind of territory here. So here I'm on the Crown site. Um, they've obviously big on reach trucks and they have, there are two types. There's this pantograph type here and the, uh, the moving mass type. So with the pantograph type, you've got this pantograph that reaches out to take the uh, move the pallet in and out from this fixed mast here and these will again these will go really high I think these will actually go up to like 12 or maybe even 15 meters now so uh, they go super high and uh, designed for order picking low floors so you can step on and off them you're standing on them you're not sitting down this are for you know people are doing real work and they will do single deep and double deep. So you notice this one has like a double pantograph and this has got a single pantograph. So this is just reaching out to the uh, end of the straddle legs to put a pallet into the racks, whereas these will reach deep into the racks to access a second pallet behind the first pallet in double deep racks for the ultimate in storage density. So that is that. Um, here's a Jung Heinrich version of the same thing. Looks pretty chunky. So Jung Heinrich there in a, a European, probably German brand, Pantograph forklift. Now these ones were, I think probably the original design of Reach Truck before they came out with the Pantograph ones. So here the entire mast moves back and forth um, on, a, on a slide along these straddle legs. Seems weird, I know, but that's how they work. And they're very effective. These machines are cheaper than the pantograph units. They're everywhere, very commonly used. Usually they're a sit down unit, um, but they can be made quite small and can operate in really narrow aisles down to about 2.8. Even I even saw one advertised to get uh, to work in a 2.7 meter aisle. So, um, uh, so generally these are sit down units. Some of them are stand up. Um, you're suitable for order picking, but generally you see these doing full pallet movements in and out of the racks. If you want to go double deep on these, you need to have a hydraulic tie extension, um, which is a thing you can do. And you can, interestingly to note, I believe you can also put hydraulic tines on the Isle Master if you wanted to have very narrow aisle double deep um, on the uh, Isle Master. And I don't think you can do that with a turret truck to the best of my knowledge. So if you want to double deep and that 1.9 meter aisle, then I think aisle master might actually be your only option. So what is next? All right, the order picker. So the order pickers, you'll note, um, th these will work in very narrow aisles. So that, that long span case I showed in my warehouse diagram, that's what this would use. These will work in a 1.3 meter aisle. But you'll note the tines don't, they face along the length of the chassis. They don't go from side to side. So these are no uh, use at all for moving pallets. They are designed for case picking. Now there are two key types. There are these ones here with an auxiliary lift so that they um, they lift the pallet up so that they're very good for building, uh, for doing case picking within, uh, within an aisle of any width, essentially. So they'll work in narrow aisles. They'll also work in standard aisles. They can get wire guidance. You can have uh, outrigger wheels on them as well if that's what you want. Um, or you can just drive them and be careful not to run into things. So, um, which is typically what you're doing. If you're, if you're using one of these to do case picking within a standard aisle width, that you're generally not using the wire guidance, which is designed for when you're working within the, the very narrow aisles. The other type that is commonly available looks like this. Now you'll notice no auxiliary lift here, just the tines sticking out. So there's a lot more bending 
so not so good for case picking. But if you uh, are picking bulkier items and you don't really need the auxiliary lift or you need to be able to step out onto the, the pallet or a platform out here, that might be uh, a better use for you. And you'll also see special unit, uh, special cases like this. You'll notice the extended straddle legs and the extended tines. Typically, you'll put a big stillage or a big platform on here with a harness so you can walk out onto it. And you see these at like Harvey Norman for moving furniture out of uh, in and out of pallet racking. So these are very special use case, but incredibly useful when you want to maximize the storage density, but you've got large bulky items. Now, the last little uh, device I want to talk about are these work assist vehicles. Um, Crown basically invented this category with the Crown Wave. When they first came out, they didn't have an auxiliary lift, but I think most of them now have an auxiliary lift on them as well. So these do not require a forklift license to operate. They go up to about three meters in the air, right, like that. Um, so you see these at Bunnings, you see these in retail stores. This is basically a replacement for a ladder. Uh, don't use ladders, they're really dangerous um, for moving boxes up and down because you can only hang on by one hand and one foot uh, each time as you're climbing up and down the ladder. So it's, they're just fundamentally unstable. So ladders are, uh, are out, these things are in, and anyone can drive them and they're easy to drive. And you can get up and something great for high shelving in retail stores or to extend the uh, pedestrian pick range, the, the range of height that your pedestrian pickers can access within your warehouse. So incredibly useful machine. Um, so this is the Crown one. Uh, this, is the, this is the Linda version. This is quite a nice machine. Also, you can see, again, you've got the auxiliary lift here. So this platform moves up and down. Um, they don't have a huge capacity in terms of uh, you know, weight capacity or, or volume. So they're only for like, you know, a few cases at a time, depends upon what you're picking. But um, but that's what they're for. They're not designed to move pallet loads of, uh, of stock, um, but they are a brilliant machine. And um, because things like the, um, the order pickers, right, things like this, you need a special license. This is not a normal forklift license. This is what's called an LO license versus the LF, which is the standard forklift. So LO is for order picker. Um, so you need to get a, a special accreditation and training on your uh, license for that. Whereas the uh, these, you, do, you don't need it, right? Uh, anyone can drive these. So that makes a huge difference in terms of accessibility and use of the equipment that you've got in your warehouse. Now, there are chunkier versions, things like this. This one's from Fork Force, but I'm sure there are other ones around. So this one's 500 kilogram capacity. You've got a couple of platforms, no auxiliary lift, unfortunately, but you've got a couple of platforms uh, either side of you, one in front of you, one at the back. But, uh, and this goes to 3.7 meters, but once it goes over three meters, you need the license, and I expect it would be an LO license to drive these sort of units. So, um, so, so great, cheaper than an order picker, but you still need the license. So it's a lot more limited. So I would shy away from these unless you've got a specific use case where this uh, is is what you need, and you're going to need to, uh, to go and get the license for it. So that is it. Those are the four key things that I wanted to uh, to talk about. And the other thing is, if you wanted to follow me on LinkedIn, here I am. Here's my profile. I, you can just search for the Logistics Optimizer, Optimizer with an S. Um, and uh, please feel free to follow me and you'll get more of my content and uh, wisdom as I uh, post things on wisdom, uh, as I post, post things on LinkedIn. I speak all about uh, warehousing and logistics generally, occasionally I stray into other areas, but I'm particularly, you know, warehouse design, process, process improvement just generally and particularly in warehousing and of course, warehouse management systems uh, out at Logistics Cloud Co. So, um, if you need help with warehouse design or warehouse management systems or process improvement in your warehouse, then uh, reach out to me at Logistics Cloud Co. or uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay, I hope that was helpful and I'm sure I'll talk to you again in the future.